All right, today's workout is more core, por favor. Last Thursday was core galore, and this week we are not gonna disappoint. We're gonna deliver a little bit more on that core side. So before we get started, I wanna give you a little bit more backdrop as to the reasoning behind today's session. Um, the core itself is meant to be a force transducer, not a force producer. So we keep this really nice and tight so that our limbs can do things that do require lots of force. So you'll notice that at each round today, you've got two movements. Movement number one is something where we're stabilizing through the rest of the body so our limbs can do things. And movement number two is a little bit more of that traditional core movement where you'll feel that direct burn in this area. Round one, first exercise is a renegade row. So you're gonna get into your full plank position as such. Now, if you've got a dumbbell, this will be a good opportunity to use a dumbbell. This is my pretend dumbbell. If you don't have a dumbbell, that is okay. So some of the things I've been preaching this week is that mind muscle connection, really trying to extract as much as you can out of the movement by what you're feeling. So from this position, you're gonna grab your imaginary dumbbell and you are going to pull that troll blade up and back, squeezing the heck out of your upper back muscle. You've got an option here. You can complete all five repetitions on one arm or for a little bit more of a stability challenge, you can rotate side to side. So again, if you've got that dumbbell, that is okay to use. If not, that is fine. You're just gonna have to think a little bit harder about the intent that you're bringing into the movement. Now you'll notice that as one of my hands comes up off the floor, I gotta push the other three points of contact into the ground even harder to ensure that I'm not rotating through my hips. Movement number two in round one is the V-sit anti-rotation. So you're gonna sit on the floor, uh, bring your legs down in front of you, and um, place your load to the side of your body. So I'm gonna use my half drank case of water over here. We've been a little bit thirsty. You're gonna sit back slightly and lift the heels off the floor. So right away I've got this midsection whew, fired on. You're gonna grab the load with both hands, lift it up and over to the other side and return. Now, important thing here, you'll notice that I'm not actually rotating through my hips or through my spine. The function of the core is to stabilize through here and to resist rotation. So yes, my shoulders are moving, that is okay, but my midsection and my spine is not. Now, if you find that holding that position is hard and you do start to wobble, feel free to just place your heels on the ground or one heel, the opposite heel on the floor. Again, you're still trying to keep the intention here. However, anchoring them there helps to get more of the movement. That is also okay. You're gonna do 10 repetitions, so five per side. You'll notice that I stopped, dead stop, and I re-picked up. So we're round two, movement number one. This is your bazooka squat. So the important concept here is that we're loading the body asymmetrically, which means that yes, the core, uh, the hips, the knees, the ankles, everything is gonna have to respond to this unbalanced load and tighten. So home equipment, big fan of the case of water here. I'm gonna load myself on one shoulder. Get into my nice athletic stance. Again, trying to create as much tension as possible through my lower body. I'm gonna descend down into my squat pattern, stand back up, squeezing the heck out of my butt cheeks. I'm gonna perform five reps with my water load on the one side, and I'm gonna switch over and perform five reps with my load on the other side. Round two, movement two, beast position with head taps. So you're gonna get down into your quadruped position. Before we even lift anything, we wanna make sure that we're firing on through that midsection. So again, thinking about pulling the hands to the thighs, thighs to the hands, you know the drill, nothing actually moves. But you're gonna get those deep abdominal muscles that we don't get when we're just doing light activity to fire on if you bring that intent. Lift the knees about an inch up off the floor. So you're gonna have your hands and your toes in contact with the ground. Lift one hand, tap yourself on the head, and return. So the value here 
is ensuring that we're not getting too wobbly or off balance as we bring one limb off the ground. That is our body reacting to this change in load and making sure that things go, oh shit, don't wanna fly over. Tap, 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 tap. Round three, exercise one. This one's gonna be a little weird. So it's gonna be a single leg hip bridge, the lower body, and then a chest fly with the upper body. So you lay on your back, you're get into that single leg hip bridge position. So first and foremost, I'm gonna make sure my lower back is pushed into the ground so there is no longer any space for me to get my hand underneath there. I'm going to push my hips up through the bottom part of my butt, not through my lower back, okay? And I'm gonna lift one leg up into the air like I'm completing my glute march. Now, you can grab your light weights at home if you've got fives or tens, or you can grab some makeshift weights. From this position, I'm going to open, 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 open. So I feel a stretch in my chest muscles, and then I'm going to squeeze. Ladies and gentlemen, imagine that you are trying to make cleavage. So if your weights aren't super heavy, like mine aren't, I'm still gonna get more out of the movement because of the intent and the contraction that I am bringing in. Perform your five reps and other side. Okay. Round three, exercise two. So last one of the day. This is going to be a side to side knee tuck. So put on your slippery socks or place a towel under your toes on a slippery floor surface so you're able to glide easily. Get into your full plank position. You are going to tuck the knees up to one side of the torso, back down, up to the other side, back down. Now the important thing here is the control that's happening through the midsection and with the lower body. I'm not using momentum to get there. I'm imagining that I'm pulling my belly button inside of my body and I am actively pulling through my core and my midsection to get movement through my limbs. So back to that first statement that I made when you started this video of the core being a force transducer, not a force 